Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Tech Geek webinar series, our endeavor to empower techies. We believe that sharing of knowledge is the key to enhance our skills and grow us as professionals. With this principle in mind, we have initiated a series of webinars conducted by industry experts to give you all a crisp insight of the various domains. The topic of today's session is Harnessing the Power of Project Management in E-Governance. Our guest speaker today is Mr. Piyush Gupta, Senior General Manager, Capacity Building and Knowledge Management at National Institute for Smart Government, that is NISG. Mr. Piyush Gupta is currently working in the role of Senior General Manager, NISG. His competency areas include strategy planning and implementation level institutional capacity building, change management in e-government projects, certified training needs, analysis expert, e-government project assessment, and program management. He is also a speaker and faculty at various institutions and forums in India and outside. Piyush in his present role at NISG is involved in strategic planning and managing large capacity building initiatives under the National E-Governance Plan of Government of India. He is the architect of e-governance workshop involving more than 250 political leaders across state governments in India. He is also instrumental to bring a full-time one-year e-governance educational program through reputed management institutes like the IIM Indore and Tapmi Manipal. Piyush has developed the framework for e-governance and capacity building roadmap that was used for all the states in India. He has been associated with the e-governance for the last 12 years and has a professional experience of 30 years in government, private sector and as an IT entrepreneur. Piyush is a postgraduate in statistics and management and has submitted his PhD thesis on e-government project assessment under the discipline of management science. He has also edited four books on case studies in e-governance in India. So without further delay, I introduce you all to our guest speaker, Mr. Piyush Gupta. Over to you, Mr. Gupta. Yeah, thank you very much. A very good afternoon to all of you. And thanks a lot for taking out the time to attend this webinar. I am also thankful to PMI for inviting me and giving me this opportunity. I hope I am audible and uh, all of you can view the presentation. Mm, yes, Mr. Piyush, you're audible yeah. and the presentation oh. is also clear. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Uh, the topic harnessing the power of project management in e-governance in today's time is more appropriate and uh, relevant across the globe as e-governance is recognized internationally as an enabler for good governance. And at the same time, it's also important for us to note that the successful implementation of e-government projects is challenging and uh, daunting task. And with this as the background, let us look at the agenda for the webinar today. Yeah. Today we are going to look at uh, four or five areas with respect to e-governance and how it is related to project management uh, complexities. Uh, first, we'll look at the essence of e-governance. What is e-governance? Then we look at e-governance project lifecycle. All of you are very much, I think a lot of IT people are there on board for this webinar, so you're comfortable with the SDLC and, of course, the project management lifecycle. But here we try to look at what really is the e-governance lifecycle. And then we look at the project management complexities when we are in designing and implementing and managing e-governance projects. What are the type of issues and challenges which come in typically when we are dealing with uh, government as a client? Okay. And uh, then we look at the need for capacity building uh, within the government and also looking at how do we build up the capacities outside the government with, in the industry also in terms of e-governance. And uh, at the end, we'll open up for question and answers. Now, before I move forward to the next uh, slide, I would like to know more uh, about the people about the community members who are there uh, connected on this webinar and there's a poll which I request you to take up where two things which I want to know is are you a project manager? Second is are you working in area of e-governance? 
So if you could take the poll. Yeah, I'll, I'll get the numbers. I'm just waiting for those numbers. Yeah, can we have the numbers which have been polled? Uh, people are still voting. Around 73% of the people have voted and we have the final numbers coming up in a few seconds. Okay, okay, okay. The idea is just to uh, let me understand uh, in terms of what is the background of the members uh, who are involved so that we can spend some, some time on, on understanding what e-governance is before really getting into the project management related issues and challenges. Yeah. The results, 84% of the people, 84% of the people said yes and rest 16% said no. Uh, yes, in terms of uh, project management. Yes. Are they project managers? Yes. 84% e of the people are project manager. I would run that yeah. poll now. And e-governance, yes. How many of you are working in area of e-governance or are handling e-governance projects? Yeah, it's coming up. People are still voting. Around seventy five percent of the people have voted. Okay, so how many are coming up uh, who are into e-governance at the moment? Uh, well, we have around 14% people who are into the area of e-governance and 86%, around 85% said that they're not into this field. Okay, so uh, then uh, we move forward on this. I think uh, the task is now easier for me because um, around 15 percent of the members they are working in e-governance area and uh, but at the same time 84 percent of you are project managers so your role as project managers when you get into e-governance becomes slightly more critical and uh, at the same time uh, easy for me to really uh, help you understand what this e-governance is and take you through the issues and challenges and how do we address that okay thank you for the poll uh, now we move on to the uh, next part in terms of uh, understanding what are the issues in the Indian context, especially when uh, citizens, whether it's an urban citizen or a farmer or industry who interacts with the government on day-to-day -day basis or quarterly, monthly basis, urban citizen normally would interact with the government to avail services for electricity, bill, property tax, income tax, related annually or driving license and so on and so forth. Whereas as a farmer would again interact with government for getting various services like uh, the income certificate for getting the loans, subsidy, agriculture department interactions, land certificates and all those things. So this was a study which was uh, done by in 2002 as part of the, uh, uh, the potential investment, improving investment climate in the country by Govind Rajan, it was called Govind Rajan Committee and this looked at that uh, average urban citizen over a period of year, one year interacts 50 times and touches 10 departments. The beauty is it's not only 10 departments located in one place but these 10 departments are spread across across the country and uh, and uh, across across the state or across the city. So he it's not that convenient that uh, that uh, he is going to one particular campus and he's getting all the work done. And if you look at farmer, again, he interacts 40 times across eight maybe different departments. And that's for the industry, interacts much larger and larger business houses. So this was slightly disturbing in terms of uh, so many 
so much of uh, efforts are spent in terms of number of trips, the cost incurred by the people who stand in the lines and again and again maybe uh, it leads to some level of corruption also, all those issues. So what was looked upon is that how do we uh, improve the productivity? Okay. Uh, let me just go to the next slide. I think there's something stuck. Yeah. So the recommendation which came out ultimately was uh, looking at how do we streamline these interactions and enhance the national productivity. And that's how uh, they started talking about a single portal, a single window concept, uh, uh, electronic form of a window or office which is available to citizens and business houses through which they interact. Now with this, we also look at the growing expectations of the citizens which is happening across, across not only in India, across the globe. And as we are moving in the developing economy, the expectations of citizens and businesses from government is increasing. In addition, there, there will be a lot of external market forces also driving the governments to change their business processes and the way it has been delivering uh, services to its stakeholder. For example, a citizen would really like that the government demonstrates high quality of frontline service. That means the, the place where the citizen interacts with the government should be congenial in the environment, the people who are interacting, he should be able to get a committed delivery of service. That's where we are looking at the uh, frontline. And the citizens are also looking at new channels to access the government services. It's not just going to the department uh, between 9 to 5 or 9 to 4 and only on uh, 4 days or 5 days a week. But citizens are expecting different channels. Why can't I access government services uh, sitting at home? Why can't I access 24 hours a day wherever I am irrespective of the geographical uh, uh, boundaries? So th these are the type of expectations which are really coming up and demonstrate better value for money. That is what they are looking at if they are paying some service charge to the government, so they, sh they should be commitment in terms of the delivery and the quality of service. Then also looking at the lower cost and greater efficiency in terms of government's own functioning. So the expectations, if you look at, they are uh, increasing day by day. It's, it's getting into a vicious uh, circle. So let us look at what is e-governance. 